Many people that invest into Bitcoin believe that global liquidity is what drives Bitcoin price. And it makes sense, right? The more money that is being pumped into the economy, naturally, the more money people might park into their investments. This is actually why this blue line, which is global liquidity, follows this black line, which is the Bitcoin price so well. But the chart is really just going up and to the right, which is great when trying to find large secular trends, but not as helpful when you're trying to find more granular data, such as the bull run top or the bear market lows. A solution to this would actually be looking at the M2 growth rate instead of just M2. Okay, so what you see here in green uh, reflects a positive M2 growth rate year over year. And what you see here in orange is a negative M2 growth rate. This chart makes it very easy to see that anytime there is a huge drop off in the M2 growth rate and it becomes negative, it has always been marked as the bear market lows. You can see it here in 2015. The year over year growth rate is very positive. It goes on a sharp decline until it hits the negative territory, which marks the bear market lows. It happens here again in 2018. Year over year growth rate is very high. There's a sharp decline and it is a little bit hard to see, but the growth rate actually does become negative and that coincides with the bear market low. The same thing happens in 2021. Growth rate is very positive, And as it starts its descent and eventually hits the negative territory, that marks the bear market low. The reason why this happens, according to Michael Howell, is debt refinancing. There is a debt refinancing cycle that plays out between every three to five years. Uh, which is why we see the spikes in M2 growth and then sharp declines. If you would like to find out more about Michael's thesis, I'll put more information about it in the description below. So if this thesis plays out again, the bear market lows would likely be in the back half of 2026. And you can derive this by finding the bull run peaks right? Because if you're looking at the orange, those are at the bear market lows, the bear market really starts right after the peak. So in this cycle, we peaked at early, early 2014. The next peak was in early 2018, right? Four years. And then the peak after that was in uh, almost 2022. So if you add four years to that, that's how you derive 2026. Now, the reason why I think this thesis is going to continue is because our debt is growing exponentially. So unless we are somehow able to pay it off, this debt refinancing structure is likely to continue and continue. Now, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, so I could be wrong. Uh, this is just my thesis that I have laid out in my head. I'd love to hear what you think, though. Do you think that the bull run will end in 2026? Or do you feel like things are going to be different this time? Thanks for watching. I will talk to you all very soon.